today, folks, I've got a real treat. And this time I mean real treat. This dude, seven companies, all privately held, private equity real estate firm with assets over $2.6 billion, probably higher by now. We looked it up yesterday. Okay, $4 billion in real estate. He's a top crowd funder who raised over $650 million and counting through just social media. He was on season two of Undercover Billionaire, where you make a company in 90 days worth over a million dollars. It's a challenge. If you haven't seen the show, it's on Discovery Channel. New York Times bestselling author of 11 business books. The most popular, I would say, is 10X Rules, Seller Be Sold. He's got a shit ton of them. He has hundreds of thousands of his online students studying at Cardone University, which teaches people not only sales, but real estate, literally how to live, how to be a better person. He's a top influencer, according to Forbes and myself. And he even has a nonprofit organization helping troubled underage youths. Not only all that, folks, and if you don't know who I'm talking about already and you've never heard of him, let me introduce you to my friend, one of the dudes that really walks the walk and talks the talk, Mr. Grant Cardone. What's cracking? Brad, great to be with you, man. It's been a long time and I miss you, miss the family. Uh, I know you're doing well. I've been watching you from afar, so I've been watching you blow up and uh, just love being on your show. We need to do this more often. Yeah, buddy. Anytime you're 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 a stand-in. If it, I think people would love it if it just became our show and you were on nonstop. Yeah, that that's a good idea, dude. People people for some reason always like our dynamic. A lot of people were texting you know, like, me. Like, What's that? You and I are like kindred spirits. You know, we're just like uh, you know. People have been asking me, man, where's Brad? Man, I, you you and Brad used to hang out. Where's Brad? Where's Brad? When's Brad coming back on the show? What are you going on his show? So I constantly hear about, I was on Clubhouse with you last night, you know, talking about this crazy uh, vaccine mandate. So I just always love your perspective, love hanging out with you. Uh, and uh, how long have you and I known each other? 12 years? 13 years? Yeah, it's going on, you yeah. know, since what, 2007, 2008? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's been a while. Maybe 2006 even. Yeah, dude, Could be. you know, feelings go both ways. You do. I, I miss you. But, you know, let me let me uh, use that as a first question, because there's a lot of people that don't know how and not that you not that you're 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 in a in a situation where you did this to me, even though we don't hang out very often. How do people cut out the negative people in their life? even if they're attached, like really attached. Cause as you know, I believe and you, I'm sure will agree who you hang around, dude matters. Talk about yeah. how, cause I, cause dude, you're so good at fricking, you know, boom. Like if someone isn't yeah. really aligned, Elena does it yeah. even better. If someone's not yeah. aligned with your guys's yeah. group, they're just not in yeah. and it's, and it, it's irrelevant what you think and what you feel. It's just boom. How do you do that? And how do people do that? And should they? Yeah, well, they should. Uh, I know everybody's talking about how to create the right network. You know, the five, you know, that phenomenon of the five people you hang around with. But everybody knows that formula or hears that formula, shares the formula, but nobody understands. To add five, you got to get rid of something. And and I think that, that for me in my life, Brad, like the number one move I make when I want to improve the quality of my life is I get rid of something. And that always, for me, it's always going to start with people. Uh, when I was 25, I went to a treatment center for drug addiction, came back from the treatment center. First thing I did was start getting rid of people. And uh, if I didn't change the people, if I didn't get rid of the people, I can't add new people. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't add new food to your refrigerator if you keep the old food. You can't add new clothes to your closet if you keep the old clothes. And you can't add new friends if you're not willing to get rid of the old ones. So, I mean, I don't mean get rid of old friends. I mean, in some cases, you got to get rid of them because there's moments in a, in a person's life where they, people are toxic, they're negative, they're making bad decisions, and they become liabilities. So friend, family members, uh, coworkers, partners in companies, investors can become liabilities. And when they become a liability, I just like, okay, I got to move this off my balance sheet right now. I want to move this liability off my balance sheet, knowing we can always come back and entertain.
pay in a relationship in the future when that person goes from being a liability back to being an asset. Well, dude, explain, so we don't close the door. Yeah, but explain how we, we, we don't close the door. But explain how, dude, because, again, I tell people, look, get rid of that person, get rid of that person, and it's always, oh, I like them, and they're my wife, or they're some shit. How do people identify liability? Because, again, a lot of people can't. Number two, what's yeah. the conversation you have with these people? Yeah, so, so the, the, the first conversation is the one you have with yourself. If you're not doing well in life and you're doing putting in the work, there's someone causing you not to do well. It's not the economy. It's not Joe Biden, even though I'd like to give him credit for my problems. It's not uh, the unfairness and injustices of the world, even though they exist. There is a person in your life that's holding you up. And I know that to be true for myself. So the first thing I look for is I don't look for excuses. I look for people who is causing me harm in my life. Who is who is hanging me up? Right. I'm looking to get rid of a person. And um, two, there's two people you're looking for. One is the evil person that's literally just trying to block you, like intentionally trying to screw you up, trying to stop you, doesn't want you to do well. You, you see those people in my life. It's easy to see it from afar. But the second group, the most dangerous group, is the people that are unconsciously incompetent. They're making mistakes in your life and they don't even know they're making mistakes. They think they're doing the right thing and they're screwing you up. And so I'm looking for people that are evil, bad, don't want me to do well, or number two, in, uh, unconsciously incompetent. And how do I do it? I'm like, boom, let's go, gotta go. I don't want the liability. Uh, when COVID happened, Brad, you, you remember when COVID hit, I was doing Undercover Billionaire. I flew to Miami. We shut the, They shut the production down, flew to Miami. And uh, immediately I eliminated an entire department. I got so much shit about this on the internet. An entire department, 24 jobs were lost. I did this in 20 minutes. Dude. As soon as COVID did, I, I probably eliminated the first 24 people of the 40 million that would be let go over the next three months. I was probably the first person to, to, to uh, get rid of people. Now people are like, Why, why'd you do that, man? You're so brutal. I'm like, no, I'm swift. I'm swift, okay? I, I, I want to move fast. I want to get rid of liabilities so that I can add and pay attention and protect my assets. Well, dude, I was, I mean, I didn't really say anything, but I was one of the people thinking, like, what a dick, dude. Those people freaking yeah. helped you build your company. And then as soon yeah. as, as soon as some shit happens, it's like, later, don't need you. Yeah. You're a liability. It's like, I thought to myself, dude, Number one, I admired it because that's what I mean. Like, dude, you got balls of steel when it comes to shit like that. I'm way too relational. To me, I thought, why would he get rid of all those people who helped him build that company right when, they, when they're when they needed? Yeah, so so just so you know, I'm a relational too, okay? I did it to protect the relations, the long-term relations and partnerships and investments we had in the other companies, so uh, when COVID happened, I think we had six companies at the time. You said I had seven today. I think we we're at 11 companies privately held. We had a 10X incubator. We had a Cardone Ventures. I mean, these companies are exploding right now. And it was because I got one that, rid of one that was a liability. We had a partner that was a liability. We had leadership that was a liability. The company was a liability. And Brad, what nobody knows is that company was making a lot of money. But- oh, yeah. It was, it was only two months old, maybe three months old, and we didn't have the leadership we needed. And COVID hit, and I knew we were going to go remote, and I'm like, I can't manage this remotely. Kill it. It also sent a message to the rest of the organization that something serious was taking place. You also and had somewhat that, of a fiduciary responsibility as a as the – Yes, 1,000 – yeah, I mean, you, you got you got a lot of people's dough, bro. Talk about how you raised hundreds of millions of dollars through social media. You just asked for it. Yeah, so we, well, the, the, the way. It's very easy to raise money when you're buying some of the assets that I'm buying. These are. Play locations amenities. I mean, these are places where you, you, you know, you would live, you and I would live there, hang out there, work out there, swim there. Um, phenomenal places. Uh, and I think a lot of people have seen how much money I've made in real estate over the last 30 years. 
dude. So we've raised we've raised almost seven hundred million dollars without going to wealthy people, and um, given you know we we'll we'll send out thirty two million dollars in distributions this year, passive income distributions to our investors. Uh, and look, I, I I'm just getting started. I'm going to raise in my lifetime. My goal is to have ten million people, ten million people pay me twenty five thousand dollars. Trust me with twenty five thousand dollars of their money because they're not really paying me. Uh, uh, that'll be two hundred fifty billion dollars in cash that I will raise, and, and that'll buy a trillion dollars worth of real estate. That's my that's my target. Dude, remember remember when you and I, well, there was a bunch of us at Deer Valley. You rented a freaking yeah. a house yeah. that was like fifteen grand a night, yeah. sick house, and they were building a house next to it that made the one we were in look like a freaking guest house. Yeah, and, that house is still for sale, by the way. I know, and you and I remember this because this was before Cardone Capital. You you yeah. asked some dude who owns that, and they said a hedge fund manager, and you looked at yeah. me and you said, "I'm in the wrong business." One thousand. Was that the, the was that when you started to, to realize shit you could just yeah. literally I'll, raise I'll money? Tell you, through- I'll tell you what happened. I'll tell you what happened to me. Nobody's ever asked me this. Why why I got in this game? Okay, I was with a lady that was involved in a divorce. Her husband was worth four point four billion dollars. She got part of it, and uh, I took her to Wall Street to meet Goldman Sachs and J P Morgan, Citibank, and one other big bank. And I arranged the meetings. Uh, I called her on her behalf. She asked me to help her out. And we flew up there. I'd never been to Goldman Sachs before. And I walked into the Goldman Sachs building. If you guys, next time you're in New York, down in Hudson Yard or down in the Finance District, you got to walk in this building. They own that building. And the building had, I'm in, I'm in this studio right now. It's about double the size you guys see, maybe four times the size of what you see on this camera. The elevators were this big. Literally, I've never seen an elevator that big. And there was there had to be eight, eight different elevators that could hold 40 to 50 people in these elevators. And I'm like, man, I'm in the wrong business. Okay, I missed, I missed it. Okay, I remember I, I read a book when I was like 12 or 13 years old about, you know, if you could be a bank, if you could bank people's money, take, you know, sh- have people trust you with their money, take that money and never lose their money that you would create massive wealth. And, but I, I never had the vehicle until I started investing in real estate. And the day that I walked into Goldman Sachs, I'm like, what the hell am I doing, man? Why am I not offering my asset? Cause in this meeting, they're like, Hey, could we help you raise money? We can help you raise money for your deals. But uh, the problem is their documents, Brad, are like, you know, that big and two fingers comes with two fingers, you know, Better and, than three. And like, me, me, meaning, meaning they really control the deal. The moment I do a deal with them, you're doing the deal with the devil. And I had at that time I had, I don't know, four or five million people on my social media. I'm like, I'm gonna go to that audience. That, that audience is now 13 million people. And um, rather than do a business with the devil, I do business with my friends and give them passive income, long-term appreciation, protection from inflation. They're appreciative. They're thankful. This has never been done before, by the way. These quality assets have never been offered to the everyday investor. Uh, We just opened up Friday for as little as $1,000. Somebody can start, a person can start earning passive income and be invested with me as a partner in an institutional quality asset. That's never been done before. We had $42 million in commitments in five days. Dude, if listeners right now want to say it's time to get some passive income, because, dude, you're the one that taught me about passive income. How how long have you not been? I've been telling you since I had, I think I had 1,000 units when I was telling you about this. Back, Back here in Miami about seven years ago, six, seven years ago. Yeah, dude. I, I again back then I wasn't listening. I was I was just you know focused on hey how do I get rich? I didn't understand how money worked. I can tell you that right now. And most people be like, but Brad, you were making so much money. What you do with the money matters more than how much you're making. I always tell people you want to know what your net worth is or what your value is. Like 
pretend your earned income is over. What do you got coming in? And when I asked that question, the answer was none. Yeah. Zero, bro. I, I if I would have been you investing with you, income. if I would have been investing with you or just copying you, yeah, I'd be worth 10 times the money in, you know, in the last five years. So passive income is massive. If people are listening and they want to invest, because again, you if, if the money's just sitting in your bank, folks, it's not doing any good. You're not getting shit there. Number two, whenever you have money, you, you tend to find a reason to use it, spend it, get rid of it. But if you Give get rid of it, it motivates you to go get some more because it's gone. Yep. yep. So where would they go if they do want to invest? Go, go to cardonecapital.com. It took me, it cost me about 300 grand in nine months to get this approved with the SEC. Uh, we had a fund open in the past. We, we closed it down when COVID happened. It's a fiduciary responsibility to protect people. I have never been able to, and I don't know anybody that's doing this, offer a non-accredited everyday person fund for trophy assets. These are, these are without exaggeration, these are the best quality assets you can possibly invest in anywhere in the country. This, this doesn't prohibit accredited investors. It just means no, no. that anyone can do it. Anyone can play now. Okay. So a thousand bucks and you can start a thousand dollars. Our average, our average investor in the last five days has put in about $5,000, but you can start with a thousand bucks. You get passive income. You become a partner in the deal. I'm your partner. You can put me on your bio. I'm an investor with Cardone Capital. And you said, it, dude, look, the only way to grow wealth is to invest. It is not because you work. And real estate, I've been telling you for 10 or 12 years now, there would be a boom in apartments. And, and uh, nine years ago, people said, oh, it's overpriced. Six years ago, they said it's overpriced. Three years ago, they said it's overpriced. I bought more real estate in the last three years than I bought in the first nine. This cycle, we are in a super cycle. America will become a renter nation. This is how people want to live. And guys, this cycle is, is in the beginning stages, not in the last stages. This is going to be a super cycle the next 10 or 15 or 20 years. If we get hit with inflation like people are talking about, Brad, I will become so rich. The investors that play with me will become, become so wealthy because these assets with the printing of money will just keep rising in value. And we're not in inflation yet, despite what the, the papers and the, the headlines say. Dude, what about, because to me, man, I'm thinking, is he fucking nuts? Like, dude, you're going to have to deal with unaccredited investors, people that are freaking, and, and again, no offense to anybody listening that might be unaccredited, people that have no idea what they're doing, which then can easily cause you issues. I remember reading you had some lawsuit from some dudes talking about, you know, and by the way, everybody was like, oh, Cardone's finally going down, finally going down. Dude, why do you think there's so many freaking haters, number one? And by the I mean, way, there's a lot of people that love you, by the way, dude. Me, yeah, inclu yeah. me included. I stick up for you. 1,000%. Hold so on, though. I, I stick up for you with yeah. people because all they think is that there's some scam going on. And I keep telling them, Grant's not scamming people. He's giving you a better vehicle than where your money is. Why does that not make sense? Oh, no, dude. The guy just wants money. They're, 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 he's going to go down. What do, you, what do you say to these people as you're smiling all the way to the bank? Dude, I'm, I'm beating the banks. What I'm doing is beating the banks. This has never been done before by a guy like me. Okay? The, the money game is on lockdown by Wall Street. Bank of America, Wells Fargo, Citibank, uh, Goldman, JP Morgan, Blackstone. The, 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 this whole game is on lockdown. You guys think I'm scamming somebody? You're already getting scammed. Uh, the, the banks, Wells Fargo, your friends at Wells Fargo, Wells, Wells Fargo the relationship bank. Uh, first of all, they were convicted of fraud. And number two, the fraud they're not convicted of is that they pay you 0.0012% on your check and savings account, which means you earn $1.20 for every $1,000 invested. This year, in 12 months, you will earn $1.20. Uh, and they're turning around. When you around. keep the same $1,000 that comes to Cardone Capital, you're paid 50 times. 50 times, and you actually get invested in an asset that appreciates. So, I, you know, what do I say to people that say I'm scamming people? I said, man, you jealous, bitch. 
Yeah, but dude, you, you know what? There, 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 there's something to say about your willingness to deal with it because when you when you open it up to accredited investor or unaccredited investors, you're opening it up a lot of headache, a lot of freaking uh, people uh, wanting to call you and get and get coffee yeah. with you because they gave you a grand, and but you're and you're is, willing to do truth. that. Why are you willing yeah. to do that? What you don't need to do that. Yeah, well, I kind of do need to do it because it's my purpose to to level the playing field. You know, I'm a disruptor. I'm, I'm, I like I like changing things up, and I don't I don't. My family was marginalized. We were a marginalized, uh, uh, lower white middle class family. Uh, I know the black and brown communities are marginalized. The Native American community is marginalized. The most Americans are actually left out of the. Whole Prosperity gap in this country, and it's getting wider and wider by the minute. Being a millionaire is nothing. I said this eight years ago. Millionaire is not a status to to uh, want to achieve to. Now you need now it's billionaires a new status. So the wealth the wealth gap is getting bigger. Okay, people have been hoodwinked by the banks and by the school system, the food system. Like there's so many freaking scams going on by by the big institutions. You can't make money saving money anymore. You're, you're, you're forced to now just send your money off the Wall Street and cross your fingers. And I'm like, I don't want to play the game. I, I don't want to do business with the big banks because they give me the two finger uh, probing. And so I'm like, I want to go to my friends, Brad, Brenda, Bobby, and say, hey, guys, a thousand bucks, five thousand dollars, ten thousand. Come in with me. Don't give me a headache. Will there be a headache? Of course there will be. But for the most part, ninety nine point nine percent of the people are so appreciative. So happy that I'm doing this for them. And if I go to a big family fund, if I went to, uh, you know, some family fund, some wealthy family, I mean, that, the, the wealthy are the only ones that get access to great shit, great investments. And if I go to those guys, they're unappreciative. Brad, you've met them before. They're white. They're from a country club. They're entitled and they're unappreciative. They give me they give me ten million dollars and they're like, hey, I did you a favor. I'm like, no, dude, I'm doing you a favor. I went and bought the deal with my damn money. We just I'm closing on a two hundred and sixty million dollar piece of real estate with my credit and my cash. I put it in a fund and then I tell people, hey guys, get in by December tenth and you can get invested in this deal. Here's the address: Los Olas Walk Apartments in Los Olas, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, hottest market in the country. Five institutions tried to buy the deal. I got it. These are the biggest institutions, insurance companies, um, but the Blackstones of the world. Okay, these are massive, massive, uh, hundred billion dollar companies. These are not millionaires. These are hundred billion dollar and trillion dollar companies. And so I bought that deal, and I'm disrupting it now. I let the little guy invest with me. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this. When you said, I don't need to do this. Actually, for me to achieve what I want to do, I need to do this. I need the little guy, the everyday families to rise up together, join hands, put their money into an account. And we're going to go buy real estate that these guys will pay a premium for when I put together about 150 of these deals. How, how are you getting them from those big ass companies with all the connections? Because I move faster than they can, okay? In first, if, in the book, if you're not first, you're last, I wrote, look, figure out what your competition can't do, won't do, and do it. So they can't write checks the same day. It's against their uh, their funds. It's against their uh, their policies, their internal policies. They can't, they don't have a decision maker that picks and sticks, meaning I find it, I pick it, I stick it. You know, and so um, I find I found this deal. I called the guy. Hey, bro, I can buy this deal. Here's my cash. Here's my credit. I can close on this deal. I'll write you a check today. I'll, I'll go, go non non refundable. See that big institution? They can write a check in twenty days, but they can't write a check today. So uh, the other thing is, these guys like dealing with me better than these institutions. It's a bunch of suits, bro. Are they your fans? Are a lot of these guys? Are a lot of these guys your fans? These guys love me, man. They're like, man, you helped my son. I got a deal in Houston, Texas. The guy didn't know me that sold me the deal, but his son knew me. He's like, Dad, you got to sell the deal to this guy. He's a great guy. 
And the kid was 17 years old. The 17 year old kid got me a $90 million deal. So, so, so I'm literally changing the game. So when you say I don't have to do this, I have to do this. This is how I grew up. I know you grew up like this. Your, your family, family never, never got a break, break. bro. And, and most, most people, people most, most people's families, family, the average family in America, middle, middle class, class, white, white family, family never gets a shot. shot. And then and it gets, gets worse. worse. Black, black, brown. brown. You can just, you just go, go down, down the scale, bro. Like, like, I don't mean you're going down the scale. scale. Communities, Communities are getting ripped, ripped off. off. And it's, it's true. true. It's a fact. It's, it's happened. happened. Uh, and, and I'll, I'll just, just say this. The last thing about, about that, about the, the race thing, thing about, about the marginalized, marginalized communities. communities. When I'm out buying real estate, I bought, I bought over $4 billion worth of real estate. So I, I, at this point, nobody can say I don't know what I'm doing. Clearly, I know something. We have 12,400 units. I have never seen a black or brown person on a deal. And that, 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 that drives me nuts. Most of my friends, uh, half of my friends are, 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 don't look like me. The people I bring on my stages at 10X Growth Conference don't look like me. And, and, uh, and when, I, when, I, when I listen to my friends, they're like, dude, this game is stacked. You're entitled, you get access. And I, I didn't know what that meant years ago. Now I know what it means and it's true, it's happening. And so I'm I want to change the game up, man. You know, you know I like you know I, I like going up against the big guys. You've watched me for twelve or fifteen years fight the big dudes. Yeah, I, I, I've seen you for the last twelve or fifteen years execute everything on you, what you said you were going to do. You got a relentless thing. It makes me think like you traded one addiction for another. One thousand percent, I did. Talk about that though. If there's someone out there that's still addicted to drugs or alcohol, yeah. how did you just flip? So, you know, I, if you don't know, I was addicted to drugs when I was from 16 to 19, uh, 20, 25 years old, about nine years of my life, I had a drug problem. And I went to treatment, and the treatment facility, it, it's even worse today. Treatment facilities just get you off of one drug, put you on another one. Uh, they had me leave on another drug. They said, look, take this. Don't get off of this. Don't try to just drop this. Stay on this, it's gonna keep you off the drugs. Well, I got home, I threw that shit in the toilet. And uh, I, I took my addictive personality and dumped it into, I'm going to become a big shot. And I was nobody. I was black sheep of my family. I was broke. I had $40,000 of debt. I was a failing salesman. Didn't even like being a salesman. And I just, dude, I just threw it all in, bro. Like, if you hate on me, you're going to elevate me. Uh, people that criticize me, hate me, say negative stuff about me. You guys, you have no idea what you're doing to me. You're like fuel to me. So that's why I never stop the haters. Like every time they breathe on me, bro, I get bigger. But dude, I've seen and every time somebody every time somebody says I can't or you won't or you shouldn't. Like I had six lawyers tell me not to open this non-accredited fund. Wow. I had haters say. Uh, he'll never do that. He'll never open his deals up to, to a thousand dollar investor. Why, 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 why are they saying that? Well, well, for the same reason, some of the same reasons you insinuated, which is, man, it's just trouble. It's trouble waiting to happen. Uh, you know, we had two kids try to start a class action lawsuit against me uh, a year ago. And the courts, uh, the California liberal judge threw it out and then said, hey, not only am I throwing this out for literally no basis in the claim. The man paid you guys three times what he said he would, three times. Number three, you cannot ever bring this to a court in the land ever again. That's how clean this man's hands are. I'm talking about me. So um, when that happens to me, I'm like, I'm gonna get bigger now, not smaller. And so the goal now is I'm gonna raise, I I'm gonna buy 40,000 apartments we're 12,000. I'm going to get to 40 or 50,000 apartments. That'll put me on the top 10 list. Uh, but the goal, is to, the goal is to raise $250 billion. Uh, I, I got a little work to do on that. And then I'll buy a trillion dollars worth of real estate. Uh, and then I'm going to run for president. Hey. I, then I got a war chest. Then I got a war chest big enough to be, the, you know, to, to, to go at it, to go at these freaking backbone, uh, these, 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 um, what it was the word? Uh, these spineless pieces of garbage, huh? Spineless, spineless. That's the word. Spineless human beings that run our 
country into the ground. How much money do I got to have before I say I'll give this to Grant and how long will it be gone for? Well, you need a thousand bucks. And but the, what the if I only have a thousand bucks? You should do it. You're already broke. <laughs> Get rid of it. How long, how long will it be gone for? It's going to probably be gone for five or six years. You're and going to get a check every quarter. And my goal is to double or triple that money and pay you while you wait for the double. And I, and I literally own a piece of whatever property you put that in. Look, the only way to build your net worth is to own assets. And a house, your house is not your asset. The SEC does not even count your home as part of your net worth statement. But when you invest in real estate outside your home, it is included in your net worth. Dude, but the dude, problem is, Fred, you, 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 you can't, just because you have money doesn't mean you can come buy a $260 million piece of real estate in Fort Lauderdale. Yeah. You still, you got to be connected. You got to know the people. You got to get the debt. You got to close the deal. You got to underwrite it. I mean, it's a very complicated process. Again, this is why so few people invest in real estate because it's a big, heavy transaction. Dude, I learned a lot. Matter of fact, you're, I learned the most from you about money and how to actually grow it and multiply it. People listening, I, th I think you have a free book. Is it Millionaire's Booklet? What is it? The one yeah, that the you- Millionaire would, Booklet. Millionairebooklet.com. Is that the one that will teach most people basically the basics of, of financial literacy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's a really simple little pamphlet like that thick and anybody can read it. It makes it really easy if you go to millionairebooklet.com. It's been translated to 38 languages. Um, simple book. Everybody should read it and keep it, man. Watch what it says about money. I mean, most people know how to get money. They don't know the other two steps. Keep, how, do I, how do I keep it? So like when I take $1,000 or $10,000 and I put in a real estate deal, I keep that money. You guys think that you got rid of it, right? No, no. The money is protected. Uh, we printed 40% of all the U.S. dollars in circulation today. 40% of all the dollars in circulation today, U.S. dollars, were not even in existence 18 months ago. So money's being destroyed. We're moving into inflation. So what I do is I just move all dollars, every dollar I have. I think you were here one day when, hey, what's the first thing you do every day? I look at my, my, my cash accounts because I'm trying to move cash out of the banks and into assets. And when I move cash from, from the banks into assets, I start getting paid rather than the bank getting paid. And, and then and I wait for that money to multiply. What if you need the money? What if you move too much? Uh, well, you know, I just go get more money. You saw me do it on Undercover Billionaire. So I didn't need, you don't need money. You need, you need investments. People need investments. The goal, like you said earlier, the goal is to have more passive income than earned income. And you can't get passive income unless you make investments. And this is what Warren Buffett said. If you don't learn how to make money while you sleep, and you guys can now make money while you sleep, all you got to do is send me a grand, send me 5,000, send me 10,000, 25,000. We had people yesterday like sending 50 grand, 75 grand, million dollars. I've raised $700 million, guys. 700 million. Is there, okay? is there, There's not one person that says I took a penny from them. Also, let me just say this, Brad. When we had the class action lawsuit, the two people, the two little punks, I went to my entire database, okay, sent a letter out and said, guys, would you like to join this class action suit? And there was 5,201 investors at the time, and not one person wanted to join the suit. Well, I know several people in your fund, dude, and I ask them, you know, how's that going? They're like, dude, I get a check every single time. Every single time, folks, it's better than the bank. Let me pivot. Pivot. Your kids, Jared's dude. Jared's just walked in the room, man. Who? Jared, Jared Glant. Oh, what's up, Jared? Yeah, Jared. What's cracking, Jared? That's another story. That's old, old Jared's a stud. What's going on, dude? What's up, Jared? How you doing, man? Good to see you, man. Hey, let me pivot, Grant, because a couple things I admire about you. One's how you take money, turn it into more money, and, and, and do it so easily. Secondly, what's impressive about you are your kids. Like, Sabrina and Scarlett are like the freaking most outgoing, you know, 
they're just freaking killer kids. Now, how do you develop their personalities and their willingness to get up on stage? Well, you know, we homeschool them, right? So I think that that has helped taking them out of the, the school system. And a lot of people are like, oh, my God, you, they're not going to be socialized. I'm like, I hope not. <laughs> not the way they socialize them at school. So um, this was before COVID. So we, we've had them homeschool for five or six years. But and me and Elena do a good job. You know, I think I'm a decent dad and, and Elena's a great mother. Uh, but the real credit, I, I got to give the real credit, man, to my church, my church. The, my kids have done courses on communication. They've done courses on confidence. They've done courses on ethics, uh, what personal ethics are. So my kids for themselves know uh, they write their own speeches. Uh, confident has created their ability to stand in front of someone communicate keep eye contact duplicate the communication and continue a communication they're they're 10 and 12 years old but they've been they did that course when they were like six and um tell me this thing didn't just freeze damn Dude, Did we freeze? You, you you froze for a second. Right when right when you were, I thought you were going to drop the secret. You said what? Now they're ten and twelve years old. Oh yeah, well they're they're. Well, how much did you hear? Did you hear about the what I was giving credit to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The church and all the courses and all the classes. But dude, yeah, it, you know so, if if that is if that is the secret, I think everybody should freaking grab their kids because most kids, including mine. I tell them, you know, I'm trying to do it myself. I'm thinking, shit, dude, you know, go introduce yourself. You know, strangers are the people who's going to be making you whatever you become. Yeah. Relationships yeah. are the new economy. You got to be, uh, you know, you got to be open and, 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 and enthusiastic to meet new people. Every time new people come up, they literally turn their head and stick it in mama's leg. And I'm like, oh, my God, like, I, I don't know how to do it. Dude, send them to that course, man. Like it, my church is the Church of Scientology. They got a freaking super course on communication. Now, if you guys listen to CNN and the tabloids, you're not going to send them there because it's all garbage, right? It's just fake news. But th that course is so practical. Anyone can learn how to communicate if you learn how to communicate. And unfortunately, for whatever reason, our school system does not teach communication skills. So we, we're so... The school system is so like locked down on put a mask on the kids. Okay. Uh, Jer Jared's sending his kids to schools that they, they don't do the ma mask and they won't do the vaccine. So like you guys just got to decide as parents. The other thing is Elaine and I did a course on parenting there. And that course on parenting taught me, Elena could talk about what it taught her, but it taught me to te treat these kids like adults in small bodies and make sure that you don't invalidate the kid's ability to know the difference between right and wrong and good and bad. And, and also it suggests that, you know, adults aren't always right. Uh, kids aren't always wrong and adults don't always know what's right for a kid. So I, I got a lot of, uh, that course really helped me as a parent, help the kids to communicate, help them with their confidence. If you guys have ever seen their speech, uh, we were out Halloween night, and uh, in a neighborhood and kids started bombing the truck because they were, they saw Sabrina's TikTok of her talking about procrastination, uh, her procrastination speech. And they saw Scarlett's speech on leadership and they were just, they thought that my kids were little celebrities. And they wrote those speeches? They wrote them. They would not present them to us. They didn't practice them in front of us. It was, they said, we want to surprise you. We never even saw the speeches. They wrote their jokes. Dude, let me tell you, when I, when I watched their speeches, even if someone wrote them, they delivered them flawlessly. Flawlessly. Like, dude, so confident, so clear, so perfect. Yes. It, it, it literally Thank brought a tear to my eye. I'm like, dude, and, I, and then the camera cut to you and you had a tear in your eye. How proud yeah. of you are, were you at that moment? So proud. Like, even you talking about it right now, I can't thank you enough for bringing it up and acknowledging it and you know, well, dude, I uh, think, I think your children kind of reflect 
you know, what you're doing at home. So I always say, if you want to judge somebody, look at their kids, you know, are they nice? Are they energetic? Are they racist? Are they, are they rude? Are they freaking greedy? What are they? Because of it, because parents are really what they get that from. Yeah. Yeah. No, we got some good kids and, and, uh, I won't take credit for all of it. Like I said, like, you know, um, I'm working hard. I'm, you know, I'm busy, you know, you know, my schedule and, and, uh, so, you know, I don't know if we're lucky, but I can just tell people what we're doing. We took well, them out of schools. Uh, they've done these courses. These courses have helped them immensely. They love doing the courses, by the way. And, um, and my kids can communicate with anyone. Well, dude, they're not spoiled either, you know. Uh, I saw, you know, I saw you in New York and... Uh, it's just like, dude, they're amazing kids. I love those kids, and I think they're going to go yeah. really, really far. But thank you. And they were asking about you the other day. They said, "Where's Brad Lee? We haven't seen Brad Lee in a long time. Where's Uncle Brad?" <laughs> yeah. Well, I can tell you what, man. I, I think they're going to go far. I love how confident and 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 articulate they're. Just, I think to myself every time I'm, I should text Grant and see what the hell he's doing. So I appreciate the inside information because if kids yeah. don't learn that, they're 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 going to have a much harder time in life, and they're not yeah. spoiled, dude. Even though they're rolling around in Rolls Royces, G five fifties, massive crowds celebrities everywhere dude it's not affecting them at least seemingly what do they say yeah. at home like do do they just think it's normal or are they or how do you keep well, them they know, level they, they, they know they know they know that, that you know they, they got a good deal and they're appreciative dude they you know one of them came up to me the other day papa thank you for this life you've given us you know which killed like it, it kills me, me right so um they they're they're nicer to other people like they 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 abuse me they take advantage of me you know but but uh at home because they, they they can get anything from me but you know again the one of the courses uh, uh that we did was on parenting and for the kids is that a kid can't actually be spoiled if you allow the kid no matter what you give him as long as you allow the kid to give something back in return and, you know, them being in the Gulf Stream does not spoil them as long as um, they are able to give back. And they can't pay for the fuel in the Gulf Stream, but they can certainly make sure it's clean. They can fix their bed. They can make their lunch. They can, they can do their luggage. They can put their clothes in the laundromat. There's things they can do and can't do, and we just let them do what they can do. Dude, rumor has it, because I didn't see no jets last time I've been around, you got a couple of new birds, little baby birds that get you around town. Do you got two helicopters or the, one? I sold the 550 uh, last week, so that's gone. Actually, you know who bought it was Tim Draper, right? Yeah. And I didn't know that, but Tim Draper bought my, my golf stream. I, I just found out because it was registered over in Silicon Valley. And uh, we bought two helicopters last Christmas, I think. Uh, a white one and a blue one, Augusta 139, two engines. I mean, f fantastic piece of machinery. Dude, some somebody told me that you have the pilot fly out on the level of your condo or that that tower, just fly there and wave at you every morning. Is that true? Not every not every morning, but from time to time, I'm like, tell them to come say hi to us. How close do they get? I mean, I could, I could have thrown a, I could have thrown, I could have hit, I could have hit the helicopter. What do you like? What do you like better? Like the helicopters or the jet? I like the new plane. I like the new plane that's coming better than, than, than what I have. What do you got so, coming? Uh, we got another Gulf Stream coming. Not that 700. No, no, I can't get to 700 yet. Look, they just put up an image of the badass machine. That thing is so sick. Now I just sold that helicopter. We sold one of the two. I bought two of these from Pfizer. That thing is so awesome. Brad, I wish, I wish you know, when you come down here, we'll put you up in it. Um, but we rehabbed the center of that. I made about a million five on that helicopter. That oh. thing is a beast, bro. 195 miles an hour, three and a half hour range. I'm going to use it today to go to Orlando for, uh, for a financial uh, conference. for Do, a real do, estate do you ever stuff. drive anymore? Or do those things pick you up, drop you off? Do you got a helipad at the house? No, no, I wish I did, though. That would be special. 
I would, look, if I had a helipad, I would freaking use that chopper every single day. No headphones in the inside. Like the inside's got a, a limo VVIP cabin. And so you can get in, man, play music. You can hear the music. That, that helicopter is stupid. Well, you, you, and, and just so everybody knows, guys, when you guys see the helicopters in the plane, like some people think I buy that with Cardone Capital money. Cardone Capital money, when somebody invests in Cardone Capital, the entire amount of money goes into Cardone Capital to buy investments. Okay, it'd be illegal for me to use it for, the, for, for that stuff. The, the, the planes, the helicopters, the rolls, all that is bought from passive income or from the money that we make online. And, and we do about, out of Cardone Train Technologies, we're, we're doing an average of about 500, Jared? Four to 500. Four to 500 grand a day, average day, every day of the year. And that's how you pay for the bullshit. That in the passive income, four thousand of the twelve thousand apartments I own, I own one hundred percent of, and I've owned them for seven or eight, nine years. And that, as as real estate matures, it starts throwing off more cash flow. As rents go up, it starts throwing off more cash flow. So yeah. those those real those pieces of real estate. I remember when I met you in Los Angeles fifteen years ago, Brad. I had at that time I had uh, two hundred and sixty apartments. I didn't have the cash flow from the apartments. Uh, by 2012, we had 1,000 units, and by 2018, we had 6,000 units, and now we doubled that here in 2021. So the cash flow starts exploding, the passive income, and um, that's how you start buying stupid stuff. You going to write another book? You know what? I had that on my list yesterday. I said, hey, what's my next book? Amazon's doing an audible with me right now. Uh, so that's going to be a good deal. It's going to be a mentoring program that should be released soon. You know, I got, and, I, you know, you know, I what, just, what book should I write, man? I'm thinking about writing 10 X kids. Well, you should, you should. Cause dude, I'm telling you, man, I, I love the, the, the nonprofit for kids. Cause that's my weak spot. And not only that yours are shining examples. So no one can say, you don't know what you're doing. I think that's a perfect example. You know, I just came out with my book, the hard way. Oh, I didn't know that. Lessons I learned the hard way so you don't have to. Dude, I got to get a copy of that. I'll I send see you it. a signed copy. Please, please. Yeah. yeah. Well, again, most of my viewers and, and listeners probably know who you were before I even introduced you. If you didn't, I'm glad to be the one to introduce you. If you guys are, are interested in, in literally learning money, go get the Millionaire Booklet. You guys obviously can follow this dude at Grant Cardone everywhere on social media cardoneuniversity.com if you're a business i've seen and, and by the way dude listen there's a lot of people that'll call me and say you know i can't get my people to train you know what's the problem grant you know what i always say dude that's not a training problem that's a management problem 1000 percent. like dude all you have to do is get your people to train it's the number one roi a business can make and as an investment and I've seen thousands of companies grant that literally were talking, well, not talking shit, but just very doubtful, you know, your people won't leave me alone, you know, and, and dude, I've seen thousands of businesses literally quadruple grow and scale because you're infusing their team with the, with the same enthusiasm and skill set your team has. Jared's leading that team, by the way, I've seen Jared since Jared got hired. Okay. And then not, now he's Mr. Big Wig running the yep. show he's got about 12 million dollars of net worth in this real estate i've been in because he he puts into every deal yeah, i see you know, I Brad, see. we should just get you on a program dude where you're just investing in every deal just throw something in for your kids <laughs> you know i don't know what stops me especially now that i've watched it prosper for seven straight I don't years know what stops either, man i don't know what stops you. okay dude you watch me go from like uh, i mean those 600 those 260 units had to be worth Maybe 500 grand. Is that right? Five million. Five million dollars. You have watched me go from five million to four billion dollars worth of real estate. Do, do you know who I'm doing these deals with? Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, uh, New York Life, Goldman Sachs, uh, JP Morgan. That's the debt. You can't rip these guys off. Like people, they're like, oh my God, he's doing this and that. Guys, I have the biggest institutions and the SEC looking at every single thing I do. 
I have never heard of anybody that ripped people off with this kind of real estate. Why? Because you don't need to. Inflation is the ripoff. Inflation basically presses on real assets and they go up in value. So I can't thank Mr. Biden enough for printing one point. Because every time they release money, things can become more expensive. And the thing that you guys have seen go up now for the last 10 years in a row is rent. So it's not going to stop. Uh, any of you that want to come play with me, man, if you're going to move, move. Brad, if you're going to put some money in this fund, you need to like, you need to, get, you know, just go on the damn site, CardoneCapital.com, put in for you. You need to put in like 50 grand because you're a big baller. You're well, going to get a big tax write off. You're going to get passive income, and I guarantee you, I guarantee you, I'm not going to sell the asset till I get a double or a triple. And if I do what I really want to do, then I'm going to probably get a 10-bagger, or as we call it here in 10X world, 10X. So when that, ha when that happens, not only did I get cash flow the whole time, I also get my not just my money back, I get the, the percentage of the deal I own back. Yes. Yes, the goal, the goal in this particular investment is, is in five years, I'm going to refinance this property and I want to send everybody their money back. When I send the money back, that's a non-taxable event. And then you still, I'll still keep you in a position in the property unless you want out. So I'll send you, let's say you give me 100. I send you your 100 grand back. You will have kept your cash flow. And then I'm going to call, hey, Brad, do you want to keep your position or do you want to surrender it to me? And you would say what? Well, I'd, I'd let you keep it. You say, but man, I think I, I think I just keep the position because you don't have any money in it anymore. No, I mean, zero. I'll let you keep, I'll let you keep the money because, dude, money's worthless unless it's being utilized in the fashion yeah. you utilize it. Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll send you back the hundred. It's a non-taxable event. You'll probably say, Grant, take the hundred and put in another deal and do that again. I mean, that's how I've created the wealth. The wealth has not been created because I went on a stage and spoke for. Uh, a hundred, hundred thousand dollars. You know, the wealth was created because the assets, while I was speaking, the assets kept going up in value, and that's the way to create wealth. And uh, up until now, up until what we've done at CardoneCapital.com, the everyday investor, thousand dollars, five thousand, ten thousand, twenty thousand, could not invest in this quality asset until we did what we did. Dude, when I first when I first met you, you were you were a little bit different. You I, you were a little afraid to spend money. In fact, I remember one time you were pissed off about getting canceled somewhere, and I yeah. said, "Dude, if I had your fucking money, I'd just do my own event." Remember mm -hmm. that? And next mm -hmm. thing you know, ten x, and then the next year, even bigger. Then the next year, even bigger. The, the this last one, dude, unbelievable. I don't even know how you're gonna outdo that one. Like, dude, you had, you damn near had Trump stopping by. You had Dana White. You had Floyd Mayweather. You had Usher. You had freaking John Travolta. You had your kids. You had Elena. You had, like, shit, Mr. Wonderful. You had, dude, a huge circling stage. It was like people were crying in the audience. This was ridiculous, dude. How are you going to outdo that? I asked so, you that. I asked you that on my balcony one time, and you said, bro, it's just money. You taught me that. What what yeah, was it about when I said, dude, if I had your money, I'd put on my own event? Clicked. Well, the one the, the, one of my super my, one of my superpowers. I believe everybody's got superpowers, but one of mine is if I hear one thing, I do it. You know, like like there's zero lag time between the idea and me executing. So when you said, hey, if I had your money, you should do your own events, like. How long? It was 90 days later. We did an event. We did our first event with 2,200 people. Hey, 90 you days later, it was, it was happening. Because I, I think a week later, you and Jared FaceTimed me, 10X growth con, dog. And it was like, yeah, bam, now, you just freaking did it. This was amazing. Like, once, something, once, once something hits me, I like put it to use. And again, I, I can only tell you guys, like I used to not act like that, but I, you know, I cannot tell you, personal confidence, man. Personal confidence is so important, and that's got to be developed. That doesn't, personal confidence does not come just because you go to work every day. You have to go do work on yourself to develop personal confidence. The second thing is, 
I don't have anything that I've done that haunts me, okay, because I've cleaned up. With the help of my church, I clean up my past. I clean up the things that, that I don't feel good about. When you don't, when you, when you don't have anything you don't feel good about, you can, move, you, can move into, you can move into the future like with speed and power. But if you have little doubts and reservations and little things you've done in the past, like I had, like everybody does, if you have these little things from the past that you don't feel good about, you can't move with speed and power because they're, they're weighing you down. And so um, when you told me that, man, 90 days later, actually it was uh, 77 days later, we did the biggest conference we'd ever done in our lives. 2,200 people. It was a very profitable event, made 4 or $5 million. Our next event, we went from 2,200 to 10,000. The third event we did had 34,000 people in it, Miami Marlins Stadium. The fourth event had 12,000 people, the one you're referring to, Mandalay Bay. That was the most like ridiculous event I've ever done in my life, was with fewer people, but another 40,000 online. And when I left there, I went and did Undercover Billionaire that was seen by 1.1 million people uh, um, per episode. So uh, each time we scaled up, the fourth one uh, that, you, that you referenced, a lot of people don't know this, but that was seen by a million people uh, 13 weeks in a row uh, because of Discovery Channel. And that was the game, by the way. The game was once we did Miami Marlins Stadium, our goal was to get a TV show, and we did. And so the fact that you say, hey, when you say you're going to do something, like I've been doing this now for 25 years. I say I'm going to do something, and I do it, period. And most of the time, I exceed what I promised I was going to do. So far, so good, man. Now, I see a backgammon. Animal, man. I'm a fucking beast. Dude, I see and, a backgammon yeah. board next to you. How much money have you made playing backgammon? Well, a lot. I mean, not enough. Never enough. But probably, uh, I don't know, $3 million. Three million bucks. Cracked me out of a little chunk of change. I'm still a little bit sour about that because half of it, Three quarters of it was online, bro. There was an algorithm. There's no, there's no. Uh, and we, we shouldn't play online anymore, but. We sh dude, but, you should give me my credit back and then we play again. Cause dude, that online, you cracked me but, but online. Me and then, and then, and then I had you as a zero in person. And then my dumb ass mistake in that fucking cube. Explain that cube. You, we, we were in Los Angeles. We had been playing a lot online. You got down online. Then you got even in my hotel room <laughs> at lunch hey, break. Tell them what at even the is. Break, you got even. How much On even? a table just like this. And then you said, I said, okay, dude, we're, we're even now. Good for you. And you're like, one more game. And that was on a real board in real time. Yes, it was. Knee to knee. Yes, it was. And that's where I, that's where I cracked you. Dude, you cracked me good, and that was the fucking last game, and that cube is what cracked me. Explain that cube. Most people so that play backgammon, by the way, they don't use that cube, and that's not really backgammon. Well, the, if you don't use the cube, you're playing checkers. Like, like the, that this cube. is one of the most brutal, brutal games. This and chess are, are the most sophisticated board games in, in the world. But if you're not playing this with... with um, with the, the cube, then you're just playing. It's, it's a nothing stupid game. But you add this little beast right here. So let's say Brad and I play for a thousand dollars a game. Well, it was two thousand. So let's just let's just use the real example. Okay, so two grand, and then and then uh, something happens, and I, I I have a good roll, and then he has a roll, and it's back to my roll again. And I'm like, Brad, I want to increase the game to two to double what we were playing for. So two thousand. If he accepts it, it becomes four thousand. He gets. A, he, he then takes this cube and puts it on his side. And then he rolls. He's, he has a couple of good rolls, and I have a, a couple of bad rolls. And he's like, you know what? I'm in an advantage now. He can then take and say before his roll, hey, Grant, I now want to go to four times the game, which is now an $8,000 game. And I'm like, I accept that. If I accept it, then it's an $8,000 game. If I decline, I pay him four, and we start a new game. And so I accept it. You got to know when to accept, know when to hold them, know when to fold them. See, and I know how to do that. Okay. And, and this thing I, goes, I four, apparently eight, do, don't eight, 16, 32, 
64. Well, I mean, I've had games where I, I was playing for, I had one game recently, I was playing for $256,000. One game. Dude, so, but, hey, but to, and to you, you know, that's like freaking 20 bucks. No, it's not, dude. Dude, you, you, you were saying earlier how cheap I am. I don't waste money. You don't see me rolling in Gucci belts. You know, you don't, you don't, you know. You, what are you, you talking about, dude? You got million like, dollar watches. I, I do, but they were bought out of passive income. <laughs> I, got, I got one on right now, in fact. Well, I'm sure, but, I'm sure if you Brad, lost money, you pay that out of passive income. 1,000% I would. I, I never spend earned income. Any of you guys listening right now, never spend earned income ever. Invest your earned income, only spend passive income. If you don't have passive income, don't spend it. You don't, don't, you don't have the right to spend money until you have passive income. Otherwise, you can never create wealth. Never spend earned income. Invest earned income. Spend only passive income. Money you don't work for. So if I trade time for money, I don't spend it. I invest it. And then I earn money for my passive investments. And then I can use that to buy time or a watch or a plane or a helicopter. So and that's dude, a freaking great policy if everybody would just use that. Dude, that's again. I don't know if Millionaire Booklet teaches that, but I think that's the next book you should write. I, this is something like, dude, I'm pretty smart, dude, in my opinion. Dumb in a lot of ways, but smart in a lot of ways. And it took me 48 years, even watching you do it. And I'm just sitting there watching you do it like fucking a dumbass. I'm just watching. Now, I didn't have a bunch of money laying around. My money was used to build and keep building light speed. And I just thought to myself, well, light speed will pay me more than that will. But I could have, if I were smart, and, shoveled, and, shoveled a bunch off to you. And, and I'd have and both have, right by now. The way, by the way, let me just say that your investments back in the light speed will always make you more money. But it won't. But you got to do it again, right? Where, where you should have taken some of that off. You, let's just start now. Don't worry about what you have done. How old are you, Brad? 52. Dude, I started this when I was 51, bruh. When you knew me back in LA, I was 51 years old. Do you know how much I've grown in the last 12 years? Yeah. Yeah, You've I've watched it, thing. bro. A lot, a lot of you guys haven't known me as long as Brad has. Brad knew me when... If you brought a bottle of wine to the table and it was more than $100, I'm like, shit, I ain't paying for that shit. I remember being at the M Hotel with you in Las Vegas, that hotel over there by your light speed, and, and there was a bottle of wine came, and it was like, uh, Brad was like, hey, you want, you want a glass of wine? I said, sure, man. I looked at the list, and this bottle of wine, I think it was a- uh, 600. It was a rent, huh? It was Maya. Maya, dude, it was Maya, man. Damn, that was good. And it was like- 200 bucks and i'm like 600 wow, bucks fool it was 600 because i had to pay i said <laughs> what a fucking baller this guy is this guy's a baller to pay 600 dollars. that was 12 years ago man hey what about you remember cancun i think even jared no, let was, me just say this the point of that story is in the beginning when you guys are trying to grow your stack your wealth don't buy 600 dollars bottle of wine okay you just don't do it. You haven't earned it. And I wasn't doing it. And Brad, you know that about me. I was extremely frugal, okay? I wasted nothing. You, you remember me when I was flying coach on American Airlines to get out to Vegas, hoping for an upgrade. So that's what a lot of people don't know about me is how frugal I have been. Uh, me and Kevin O'Leary talked about this, uh, how long I lived well below my means and never exceeded my, my ability um, to pay the bill. And then only invested passive, only spent, wasted, did dumb shit with passive income, not earned income. Dude, you remember in Cancun when I got Reba McIntyre to come over to the table? And you remember that story? I do. I do remember that. For those of you listening, it was pretty me, Grant, Jared, everybody. Again, once, once again, I got cracked for the bill. I think that bill was like 12 G's. 1,000. There was a bunch of us. Well, I was going to pay for it. There was, so, so dude, let me ask you something. There was no social media back then, right? I don't think so. Yeah. No, otherwise I'd have Reba on my damn, you know, my social. 
Yeah, but my 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 wife my wife loved Reba. She was going to get up there and go hound her. I've done this several times in the past. I said, no, 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 I'll get her to come to me. I don't remember if it was you or my other buddy that was sitting at the table or Jared, but somebody said she ain't coming over here. I I called the wait waiter over. I said, what are they drinking over there? They said something like King something. I sent them a bottle, said Happy Birthday or whatever they were celebrating, and sure enough, old Reba shows up when we were singing Happy Birthday and sung with us. No, it's not in there, Johnny. Yeah, no, dude, you've always been great at that. You've always known how to use money to hook, get the hook up. You just didn't, you know, now we got to start dumping into this real estate fund. Yeah, well. By the way, j- just so you guys know on the real estate fund, j- just h- listen to this, Brad, because you'll get it. The non-accredited, the little guy, supposedly, gets to put in $1,000 at a time. If you're accredited and you're a rich guy like Brad, the minimum's 100 so I'm actually making it easier for the little guy than I am the big guy. But for you, Brad, I'll make some exceptions if, you, if you're running a little light right now. How do you, how do you know I'm accredited? Because I, I know how much I pay you. <laughs> you're accredited based on what I pay you every month. Okay. And I've, been paying you that, I've been paying you that for fucking 11, 11 or 12 years. I'm still your number one freaking performer on your platform. There's no doubt. I would say yes. Still the number one performer. Always, you know. Why, dude? Why do all those guys hook up on your on your light speed platform, and I'm the I'm the one that just crushes it. You know, because I'll tell you, you do what you say you're going to do, and you're not you're not afraid to promote. You know, uh, believe it or not, uh, I would say eighty percent of the people on my platform they've got good content. It could help a lot of people, but they don't believe in it themselves, and they don't promote it. And I say, look, dude, look at Grant Cardone, because they all want to make money like you. And I say, well, look at Grant Cardone, dude. Every five seconds, he was on social media. He lived on social media. He worked on social media. He made it look easy, but he freaking talked and talked and talked and talked for five years straight and never shut up about it. I even told him a story. I said, one time, dude, I called Grant and I said, dude, I'm going to fucking unfollow you, bro. Cause I, you hit me with a freaking buy some shit or, or talking about shit constantly. You, you know what you said? You remember what you said? So don't you, follow me, dude. Yeah. You, you said, buy- you said, go ahead. You ain't buying nothing anyway exactly which which again that light bulb turned on i'm like dude that makes perfect freaking sense you're not looking for the haters you're looking for the people that are buying and if you're not talking because of the haters no one's buying yeah and and when when people hate hate very seldom unless they get religious or really political or say something negative about my kids which they have by the way i've seen people do psycho shit about my kids the only, I, I, I rarely block anyone or stop their comments because those comments feed the fans and, and the followers and the dedicated. Dude, I know uh, you only had a half hour. I've kept you an hour and some change. Last thing, and then I'll let you get back to your empire. What advice would you give Brad Lee? No holds barred, brother. Tell the truth. If you woke up, you looked down, you noticed your dick was a little bigger, and you feel and you realized you're Bradley, what would you do? Okay, well, you know, I mean, you want me to really be straight up? Yes. Or you want to do this no bullshit, bro. Like you care about me, like you actually want me to win. Come on, well, dude. I've always wanted you to win, man. But and you know, at it. some point, I, I just tell you right now, like. Man, I've told you the same things over and over again, like over and over, and I'm like, fuck it. He ain't gonna listen. I'm to I'm taking me. notes now. Now I'm taking notes. Come on. So number one, bro, whatever amount of cash you have sitting in a bank right now, you need to get it to work for you. You do not need more money at light speed. You need to dump out your cash accounts. How much cash are you sitting on, Brad? Not much. How much? <laughs> Dude, you always do this. No, you want it. You no. ask me, and I'm going to tell you, and we're going to do this right now. How much cash yeah, are you sitting on? It, it doesn't matter how much, how much cash, cash. How much cash are you sitting on? It doesn't matter. How much cash are you sitting on? it's a little, well, again, light speed or me personally, you personally first, not a lot. Unless I sell that watch you gave me. Tell tell me about how much if I sell the watch you gave me be a couple mil. (laughs) Okay. Tell me, Hey, send me that watch back. By the way, if you're going to, I'd love to have that watch back. I love that fucking watch. I gave that to you because I love you, man. But by the way, that, 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 that still to this day is my favorite watch. 
Yeah, I love that watch. You can't even like that's my favorite Hublot ever done. So Dude, nothing goes one, better. If you nothing have a goes million better. Dollars, how much sit, is sitting at light speed? It don't matter. Just tell me the number. Give me a I'll, number. I'll tell you offline better. how much, but tell me what to do with it. Okay, I would dump all of it, one hundred percent of all of it. I transfer the light speed money to your account because you're going to get taxed on it this year anyway. And I would push it into this real estate deal so you get the depreciation from this big asset I'm buying. This asset has, we will accelerate the de depreciation on the building. At the end of every year, I bang my damn, I bang hard on the real estate because I get a portion of that $260 million purchase, probably a hundred million of it to write off against my taxes. So number one, bro, you got to start investing your money for your kids. You need to start investing in something that is not dependent upon light speed and your personality, number one. Number two, number two piece of advice I would give you is you need to decide whether you want to be a real businessman or whether you want to be a fucking actor. Because I know you want to be an actor. You want to be a damn star. You want to be a celebrity. And I, and, and, and I think you get confused between being the influencer. Now, I, see, I'm not confused. Did I like people are like, oh, man, you you trying to become a celebrity on uh, on Instagram. I'm like, no, I am a celebrity on Instagram. I get fucking rich on Instagram. So, like, you know, you need to get your financial targets locked in again. To create wealth for yourself and your family. Because you ain't going to be Kevin Costner, bro. It ain't happening. If it was going to happen, it would have happened already. <laughs> OK. So I would tell you, man, like, you, you got time. At 54 is when I got my shit together. All my wealth has been created in the last 12 years. You're going to be 63 here soon, 64, 65. And, man, what you do in the next 12 years can change everything. You should be flying private, but you're not there yet. You know, and, and you know, you probably need to sell light speed at some point and go in a different direction. That's the third thing I would tell you. I would have dumped that already. I'd have sold it to somebody else. Um, or find a good partner, you know? Like me and you talked about this a hundred times, but like, you know, to blow that thing up, to take it to the next level and take it public. So last thing is, well, you're gonna see me, everything, I, all the advice I'm giving you, you know I'm doing, including the big P word. And I ain't talking about penis, because I know that's exactly where your head went. I'm talking about public. So I'm going to go ring a bell. I'm going to go ring somebody's bell. I'm either going to ring Wall Street's bell, or I'm going to ring Blackstone's bell. And I guarantee you, I'm going to crack something. So I'd go, I'd go hang out with some guys that aren't just dropping bombs, but they're cracking racks. Dude, last thing, last thing. You got in shape. Wait, wait, hey, what, which of that advice are you going to take? The question is, is when I'm going to take it all. The question is, is when and that's the difference between you when, when, when for me is always now, dude, it's just what, what I feel like when I transfer all my money and light speeds money and it's gone, yeah, I get a sense, I get a sense of panic. Dude, you're going to make money faster, pal. You're not going to live in the panic. That's why I hustle all the time. You got to admit, man, ain't not, not many people have the hustle I have. Well, I know and the reason I have that kind of hustle, the, the reason I have that kind of hustle is because I keep my tank empty. I know, but dude, an empty tank gives me anxiety. Yeah, I understand. But right now you should be, you should be anxious because you're not further along than you should be. And you know, that's the truth. You know, you should be further along. That that's a fact. That is a fact. Everybody knows it, Brad. <laughs> Everybody knows you should be father. Fuck you. You're fucking talented, dude. You're intelligent. You, you, you see the future. You ought to be, you ought to be fucking super, stupid rich. So either the, and now I'm going to go back to what we started the show with. If you're not where you should be, then you got somebody around you. Somebody around you has got a foot on the brake. Always. I told Mike Tyson this, and they wouldn't even let me back in his camp. I said, Mike, man, if you're having problems, bro, there's a person in your life that's causing you problems. It's always a person. It's never you. So, Brad, it's not you, bro. It's another person causing you problems. You cannot have problems. You cannot have problems in life without another person causing the problems. 
Shit doesn't just happen. It's always about people. How do you root those people out and identify them? Make what a if- fucking list, bro. Make a list. Go sit down today and say, hey, liabilities, assets. Okay? Who are my assets? Oh, my kids are my assets. Okay, good. But when do they become liabilities? Okay, when I go to Bogota, Colombia, my kids become a liability to me. Because for me to travel with them, I got too much attention on them, so I leave them at home. You understand? Okay? So what, what, what's an asset? Melissa, okay? Uh, uh, you're Jason, uh, who, who's the assets? Okay, they're assets, but when do they transfer to the liability column? You know, just because my mom loves me or my sister loves me doesn't mean they're assets. It means they love me as an asset, and that's cool, but they're, they actually could be liabilities for me in, in getting advice from them. Mm-hmm. Or maybe they just went bad. Dude, people can, people can go bad. Yes, they can. And there, was a, there was a time in my life where no one should be around me. I was a complete liability to everyone around me. Dude, that's another but, thing. Five, about five, six years ago, I don't know when it was, dude. Boom, you start seeing old GC freaking start shaping up like a champ, dude, like a champ. What, what, what's that about? And I know you just started this 10X Health thing. Yeah, yeah. Talk so, about uh, that. 10X Health, yeah, we're, we're going to go. I mean, this is a company I'm going to end up taking public, 10X Health System. We're going to roll these out. We're going to have 10X centers. We'll have them in Vegas, New York, New Jersey, Indianapolis, uh, all across the country. Regenerative, reg, can I say regenerative? Reach in medicines, alternative medicines. COVID has like spiked this um, interest in it and uh, spiked uh, a play on words there. And um, um, so that's what I'm using. You know, I'm using infrared light, man. Uh, I'm using uh, saunas that, that heat you from the inside, not the outside. Uh, that little egg that you might have seen me in. That thing, I can only do that thing three times a week because literally, 20 hours after I do it, it's 30 minutes in an egg. I, I heat to 190 uh, degrees. Uh, COVID cannot live uh, above, like, I think 140. So I'll heat my internals to 190 degrees. My exterior does not get hot. 12 hours after I'm in it, all of a sudden I'll turn on this heat inside of my body and I can just feel stuff moving in my system. And it burns, burns calories, gets rid of shit sugars. Um, gets rid of the fog, the mental fog stuff, the infrared doing phenomenal stuff. Like I want to go in that space because it's massive. Everybody's got physical problems. Everybody's aging. Everybody hurts. And if you can stop pain, aging, and get preventative medicines, which FDA, CDC, uh, AMA, none of those guys promote anything uh, preventative. Uh, so I want to Did you freeze again? Oh, you're back. Grant, how did Elena like that? Because Elena's always in shape. She's always been into fitness. How does she like you getting badass and ripped and ready to rock? Uh, she likes it, you know, but, man, she's running. So she's in Mexico City right now doing a, a conference down there. I mean, like, she's getting so busy now. Like, I, I, I'm in a place where I don't want to do all that stuff, and now she's cranking up to do it. See, see, that happens in relationships. Things, people do things that things people change and evolve, and now she's getting into her own thing, and she's got this, she's growing this empire. Yeah, I understand. I got that. Um, and uh, I'm like, man, I don't want to go do all that shit. I, I already did all that shit, but she wants to do it, so now we got to kind of re- recalibrate how that works in our life but um she she works out every day yeah she's a badass and by the way if you guys don't know elena cardone and you want to see a prime example of a freaking you know old movie star glamorous smart funny person go find elena cardone it's at elena cardone isn't it or is it elena yeah yeah, she's phenomenal phenomenal chick phenomenal friends great wife great mother she wrote a uh, book. She's vicious, dude. She's vicious. Like, dude, she wrote a book. She wrote a book that 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 is getting like critical acclaim, especially from 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 women who have uh, relationships that they want to freaking fortify. You know, I think it's called. What's the book called? Uh, uh, 
Build an empire. Yeah, build an empire. Dude, if you guys aren't following Elena, and, and not only that, dude, but Elena's- You're going to love hearing that, Brad. She's going to be like, where's Brad at? Where's Brad? What's wrong with Brad? God damn, I ain't seen Brad in a long time. What's wrong with that guy? What's wrong with that guy? Well, Elena's the-, the She's the, going to love hearing you talk about her. Well, I got to tell the audience, listen, I mean, if you like Grant, you're going to love Elena even more, because I did. And I can tell you right now, that's one of the proof that I knew this dude was a good dude and a closer. Because Elena literally is out of his league. Like, literally, Elena's like out of everybody's league. But this dude closed her. And that proved to me this dude's no joke. And if you don't know him, now you do. Grant, I really appreciate all the time you gave me today. I'm I'm happy for all your success. I'm going to quickly move something into Cardone Capital just just so I can say freaking Dude, I dare you to do it today. I dare you just to like, whatever the number is, just move something there just so you break this procrastination thing that you have going on. I'm going to go put a little little piece in. It's not a big piece, but I'm going to go put a little piece in today. Yeah. Okay, and then and then uh, what what did I want to tell you? Yeah, dude. Hey, what what about these guys you keep having on your podcast that hate on me? Who? Uh, you know who, man. You you've had two or three of them. Guys send it to me and say Bradley's talking shit about you again. You dude, know? You, you can uh, you, you can't find me talking shit about you unless. And, and, and I'm like, man, as long as people talking about me, I'm cool. Yeah, but who was it? Because not a lot, of, not a lot of people talk shit about you, dude. And when they do, I I freaking basically stick up, for, dude. Trust me, dude. I know you well enough where I'd say, "Fuck him. He's a clown. He's a loser." Dude, I well, think it's had, pretty obvious. Fucking, I'm gonna tell you something. You've had some clowns and some lure, losers on your dropping bombs. Well, dude, we can learn I from. One of your shows, I'm like, you need to drop him. That would be the bomb. Listen, we can learn from everybody, can't we? Yeah, but dude, don't hang around losers and fucking frauds and scammers and dickheads. Dude, I don't know who you're talking about, but I think I might have an idea. Is he on Clubhouse sure, a lot? It's not one of them, by the way. You've had a couple. Like, like you, there was, a, there was one point where you kind of went on a, like, oh, God damn, he's, he's reaching the bottom of the basket now. Who? <laughs> you don't want you you to name no names? Text, text me their names. You know who they are. I, I wouldn't even. I know one. Okay, yeah, go, go. you can go to two. All right, well, let me let me let me let me figure out who that is. I mean, look, you remember, you remember that 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 other dude years ago? I'm like, why why are you doing business with that guy? You know who I'm talking about? Tennessee. Yes. I said, bro, why are you doing business with that guy? Blah blah blah. I said that guy is a punk. He's a scam and he's trouble. Was I right? Yep. I'm always right about that. <laughs> dude, what I ought to do? What I ought to do is every time I get a guest coming on, I'm gonna text you. Thumbs up or thumbs down. Well, you should. Yeah, if you got a if you got a sense for it, I, I'm a little bit I'm a little bit uh, jaded when it comes to the show because again, I just started it. Next thing you know, it got popular and more popular, and right now it's yeah. more popular than even I think it how is. Did that, how did that girl do that went to work for you? Oh, told you. Eesh. Told you, dude. Listen, hey, yeah, you did, you did. And, and here's what's even funny, how you said it, too. You said, dude, what are people going to think when I flush my toilet, the turd ends up at light speed? <laughs> Ooh, it was funny, dude. Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm learning. You, man. Hey, yeah. I'm learning still. And again, I, I, you know, it, it takes me but a while. You got to start taking action faster, Brad. You know, you, you've been learning. you got to start taking action faster. Fuck the learning, okay? Learn, learning does not change the game. Action t- changes the game. Mm. And that's where I beat people. You guys are all out there learning. I'm out there freaking taking action. Dude, I'm going to come to Florida. I'm going to sit down. I'm going to bring cash, and we're going to play that yeah. game next to you. Okay. You want to you roll right now for 100? Let's roll for 100. I'll roll the first one for you, and I'll roll the second one for me. Okay, so how do I win? Well, if you roll bigger than me. Okay, deal. The Hold on. First one's you? Yeah. Well, no. You tell me. First one's you or first one's me? First one's, first one's you. Hey, first one's you, and it's for okay. 1000 and and I'll Venmo right when we're done. Okay, good. Okay, good. Okay, I'm rolling for you right now. You ready? No, no. You first. Okay, I'll go first. Okay, Jared's the judge here. He'll call it. I'm supervising. Okay, I rolled eight. an eight. eight. You want to see this? Ah, uh, Go ahead. It's a five and a three. A and a Hold three. on, I'll show it to you. It's a five and a three. Box cars. It? Okay, you ready? Box okay. cars. Okay, you ready? This is for you, Brad. 
It's a seven. Seven. Swear to God. God damn it, dude. We're going win a chicken dinner, baby. Oh, that's good, man. That's good. Okay, that's good. I'm going to throw that in the Grant Cardone Foundation. Hey, you got it, man. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to Venmo you. I'll, I'll, I'll Apple pay you right now to your cell phone. I'm also okay. going go to go to CardoneCapital.com. Is that where I go? Yeah, look, this is what I'll do for everybody that's watching, okay? Anybody that puts $1,000 in today, we're doing a three-day event in second week of December. It's all real estate, three-day real estate summit. This is like... We did, we've done, this will be our third one. This is probably going to become our most popular workshop that I've ever done in my career. I do the entire three days. I will give you a virtual seat when you do at least $1,000, okay? We sell the seats to that conference. Anybody does $1,000 because of your show, I'll do, uh, I'll give you a free virtual seat to uh, the grantcardo.com forward slash summit, is there any is there any code where it says bomb squad or something so you know? Uh, no, but we'll figure that out. Maybe it, maybe. When's the show, show going to post? When's, when's this going to post? It'll. I'm going to try to post it asap. Okay. I'm moving you to the front of the line, dog. You should, dude. You should. Hold on. Um, but anyway, we'll figure it out. I'll figure out how to how to make sure that the people we know that people are doing it uh, because of the show. But it's CardoneCapital.com. for no, no, not just yeah, CardoneCapital.com. Cardone you put a thousand bucks in. Uh, if you put in at least, well, you got to put in at least a thousand dollars. Number one, that's a winner. But number two is, I'll give you a seat to our summit. Fair enough. And 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 last but not least, dude, can you fucking can you follow me back on Instagram again? Done. Done right now. Pre- love you, man. Peace, buddy. See you soon. Thanks for, thanks for your time, man. Folks, Thank as you. always, this dude ain't talking no shit. I'd listen to this episode several times over. Share it out because it might not be for you. Share it as much as you've ever shared. Go rate this thing. And as always, keep it real. Dropping bombs with the real Bradley. Subscribe now.